My name is Joanna Kerr and I've been active in the advancement of women's rights for almost 20 years now. Uh, give us your first impressions of what you've learned and heard this morning so far. Uh, it's, uh, it's always heartening to, to hear that we have made progress because it's very hard when you're in the middle of the movement to lift your head up and, and realize from a from a bird's eye view that yes, in fact, the past 15 years have brought us some successes. Needless to say, the challenges are there, but uh, you've really got the sense of the ways in which communities are engaging at a very different level with the issue of violence against women. Now, if you could go round up another, we'll see if they can grab it. Okay, well, we're doing this. Um, the overall objective for this is really to share some strategies in terms of how to deal with violence against women. What right. did you either learn or what may you offer yourself to lend your voice? Um, you know, one of the things that was reinforced in this conversation this morning is really about how to make the links of violence against women with health issues, with economic issues. And I think that's the latter issue. That's probably where I have the most um, experience working in economic development and most recently working in the area of humanitarian work. And I really see that um, the ways in which we need to really bring in a, a ex explicit strategy around social transformation in uh, any strategy for economic development. And so many of the women's rights activists that I, I deal with, they don't want us to always talk about violence against violence, violence against women, violence against women, very, very negative, almost a curtailing of an agenda, as opposed to what is it, that in ki the kind of society that we want to create, cultures of peace, in an economic development strategy, or when we're coming out of conflict and we're managing conflict out of a, a humanitarian disaster or, or, a, uh, or, or a conflict. So if anything it would be how are we making those linkages more effectively around economics and the ending of, of violence for an agenda that is about social transformation for all. Are you familiar with WLP and their work? Um, what might you uh, offer to them in terms of the 10th anniversary as far as the impact that you think they've had on the women's movement? Uh, like, uh, you know, WLP has done some amazing work. It's, it's not easy to keep these organizations going. Uh, you know, hats off to Manaz and Rocky for, for leading the way that they have. Um, this is a, a, a difficult time. Resources are few. To be able to mobilize the kind of resources that they do to, to deepen the kind of networks that they have, um, only just good luck and to keep on doing what they're doing because it's clearly working. Great. Thank you very much. Excellent. We got it at the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. Repeat the question for me. Oh, yes. Okay, we will. <laughs> okay. She wants to. <laughs> roll, well, roll a little bit. Okay. I'm rolling. All right. And first, uh, tell me your name, organization that you're associated with, and where you're from. Uh, my name is Mehnaz Rahman. I am from Pakistan, and I represent Aurat Foundation of Pakistan. Okay, and when you talk, look at me. You oh, sorry, That's sorry. Okay. Yeah. First, share with me your general impressions of the conference so far this morning. Uh, I think it's a wonderful experience. There's so, I mean, women from so many countries are sharing their experience, and they are sharing the, their knowledge. It's very informative, and it's very encouraging as well. Um, certainly one of the purposes is to share strategies, best practices in any way to, you know, uh, defeat violence against women. What are some strategies that you could offer uh, to share? I think uh, we should focus on legislative reforms as well as, as, well as on uh, social attitudinal changes because these attitudes, especially in South Asia, are a big obstacle. Even if we make laws, it's uh, difficult to get them implemented because of social obstacles. So we should work on both platforms, I mean legislative as well as social. And you're familiar with WLP, obviously? Yes, of course, okay. yes, of course. Uh, on their 10th anniversary, is there, uh, can you t tell us a little bit about what you think their impact has been, uh, you know, in dealing with women's issues and what kind of message you'd give them going forward? I think uh, social research is a very important aspect of all the 
efforts of uh, and of uh, the, all the activism that we have been doing, the, their part of research part is contributing towards it, and I appreciate it very much. Okay. And any uh, personal message you can offer to the organization? Uh, yes, please um, focus on uh, villages, on grassroots level, because those women are suffering the most. Because we are educated, we can speak for ourselves, but those women, they need our help more than anyone else. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you, sir. Yeah. 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 My name is Naim Mirza, and I'm uh, from Pakistan, uh, also from uh, Aurat Foundation. It's a women's rights organization. Uh, I think uh, violence against women is a very crucial issue uh, for Pakistan. Uh, since my organization is uh, compiling data on violence against women, uh, we have very horrifying uh, figures for violence against women. For instance, uh, there have been 608 cases of honor killing only last year in Pakistan. And the incidents of rape and gang rape and so many other categories are increasing at very alarming pace. So this is a very crucial issue. I think the, the organization, which is a grassroots organization and has a national outreach in Pakistan, um, we are trying to have formal uh, you know, laws on uh, domestic violence and sexual harassment, and you would be pleased to hear that recently the national uh, parliament has approved uh, two uh, important laws on sexual harassment at workplace for women, and then the, the law on domestic violence is in process and soon will have soon we'll have it. I think one of the uh, uh, other important strategy is to engage uh, law enforcement agen agencies uh, in, in, in trying to address the issue of uh, violence uh, at, at all levels. Because these are the people, those who can, who can help police, for instance, for the judiciary, they are highly, we have, we have observed that they are too uh, insensitive to these issues. They don't consider, for instance, the domestic violence as a, private, uh, as, as a public crime. So this is one very important strategy I think we are we're trying to pursue uh, in addition to engaging men, in addition to community action against violence. I mean, we have, you know, these strategies have paid off. Yeah. yeah. Can you uh, comment uh, on the, yeah, the, yeah. the work of WLP and uh, their impact they've had in the world? We have started, we have recently started, uh, you know, uh, in, in institutional arrangement with WLP for training of women uh, to enhance the uh, leadership skills uh, at the grassroots level, and this is really a very, you know, uh, exciting experience for us. Uh, I would say that uh, WLP is uh, having the 10th anniversary, and at the same time we have uh, the 10th anniversary of uh, 1325. They are twins, and uh, they bond together. It's a very uh, historic occasion. We wish them uh, success. They are expanding the work. They are expanding the horizons and their approach. And I think with the, the, with the sharing of experiences from South Asia, uh, since we're in South Asia, they would, we would uh, enrich their understanding inside of the women's rights issue, and as well as we'll also have uh, you know, the, the kind of uh, guidance and uh, understanding and division from WLP and wish them all success in the, in the work. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Sir. Yeah. A student here? No, I'm a student in Oregon. Okay. So I'm going to ask you to just tell me your name, and say where you go to school, maybe what your major is, something like that. Okay. okay so start with that, and you'll be looking at me. Okay. Um, my name is Danielle Hill, and I'm a student at Eastern Oregon University, where I study history and gender studies. Um, I've seen you in the audience this morning. Give me your first impressions of what you found this today. Um, so far, it's been really good. I've been very impressed with the speakers and the panelists, specifically the panelists. Um, and I've been impressed with um, how all over the world women are coming to end violence and just how culturally how they come to do it in their own culture in different ways, I guess. Do you have any thoughts yourself uh, to just sort of add a voice to the many others about things you think we can be doing or people can be doing to address the violence against women issue? Yes, I think I have two ways. Um, I think education and global education, not just um, education in the area um, about that culture. I think um, global education about violence on a global level. And then also, I think, educating women to get into um, leadership positions and politics 
um, because if women are in those leadership positions, then we will better be able to make um, change and have the issues about violence against women heard. Are you familiar with WLP, or is this the first time you've heard This of is the first time I've heard of okay. them. Um, all right, then I won't ask you the other question. Okay. <laughs> okay, thank you. Yeah, good. Good? Uh, start out by first telling me your name. Or, or do you work with an organization, or are you? I'm interning in the in the United Nations, but I study. I'm a PhD student in okay. Peru. So, so and, t we're, and what I'm going to do is have you state your name, tell me that aspect that you're interning, you're a student, etc., and where you're from. Okay. I start. Okay. Okay. okay, but my English is not very good, so well, it's okay. Um, just, just speak up a little bit. Though. Okay. Well, my name is Babu Gay, and I come from Senegal, but I'm currently interning in the United Nations in the Office of Legal Affairs. I'm a PhD student in Paris and also teaching assistant there. And I heard about this uh, lecture, uh, this lecture with the Repro Health Law in Toronto, where I subscribe online so they can have you no. Know, um, little about events here, mm -hmm. events here, and well, I found this one very interesting, mostly for my PhD, because uh, now I'm doing my PhD in human rights, and I try to turn it uh, the uh, interrelation between human rights and cultural diversity, and this topic is mainly one of which I want to focus on. So it was very interesting for me, mostly the the panel actually, and also the. Well, actually, all the lectures were very interesting, yeah. and I'm really happy and really proud to be here to he hear all the, all these lectures and all experiences I learned here. It was very, really, very interesting. Yes. A uh, part of the um, objective today is for people to share ideas and mm. strategies about ways to reduce violence against women. Do you have any thoughts on that matter? Of things you think we could be doing, communities oh. could be doing. Yes, because uh, well, for example, the the example given by one of the panelists uh, in from, who was from Nigeria, I think it's a very good thing what the the organization is doing, and I hope they will extend it in all the countries like mine because I think that we have a lack of those kind of organization actually because we we experience many of the kind of violence for women in mainly domestic in domestic violence for women in in my country and in all the many other countries actually in Africa and I think we need we really need something like this and some organization where women can go to where women will be aware that they have a place to go if if they want for it for example I think it's a very good thing uh, you're probably not very familiar with WLP, are you? Is this the first time you've it, come? Yes, yes okay. it's my first time. Thank yeah. you very much. Thank you for sharing your thoughts.